Taylor Swift is there and she's meeting people. Everyone except me is there and I am so depressed. <laughs> I'm stressed about buying a $20 bucket of popcorn. I also can't believe she got rid of Long Live. A pink popcorn bucket. So they have this black tote bag. I'm on my way to the movies. Thank you. <laughs> what? Yeah, there I am. I'm right there in the orange. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I guess this is gonna be the beginning of the Eras Tour movie vlog. Today is Wednesday, October 11th, and tonight is the official premiere of the Eras Tour movie in LA. And I don't know if we knew that it was in LA. For some reason, I just like assumed that it was going to be in LA. Or around two weeks ago, people received emails from Spotify that they were invited to the premiere. So apparently, if you, you know, were in Taylor's top listeners you got some people got invited so i just saw on tiktok that 2200 people were invited i was not one of them which is very tragic so i feel like it was just by random chance that if you got chosen because i obviously listen to taylor swift a lot and it totally screws everybody who listens to like apple music or other platforms other than spotify so yes i have major major fomo that i am not there tonight but it is what it is we're gonna get over it it is at the grove at an am in LA. I just saw that there's like a huge red carpet and I feel like it was assumed that she would be there because you know when she had the all too well short film premiere she showed up and there was like a red carpet and so I'm assuming that there's gonna be this big red carpet event. Taylor has to be there like if there's a red carpet. I just saw that they have shut down all of the stores in the area of the Grove. They've doubled up on police, you know security, all of that so definitely Taylor's gonna be there tonight but a lot of people are saying it's interesting that again it's in LA and not New York everything about this new Taylor's version of 1989 is giving beach LA vibes California which is super weird because obviously it was like a New York City album you know she announced 1989 in LA at the very last show all of the album covers are beach themed she's in the sand there's water the seagulls of course that makes sense because you know on the original album cover we had the seagull sweater which means like beachy vibes so I feel like everybody is taking this as like driving home the theory of the double album 1989 being a beach and a city album and so people are saying tonight there could be some announcement some crazy announcement happening at the premiere I will definitely be very close to my phone to figure out what's going on it is a three-hour movie it's two hours and 45 minutes so it is a long one I will be seeing it in my local movie theater this Friday when it comes comes out for everybody else, all the locals, I guess. But yeah, I'm actually going to it twice on Friday because the only option for getting three tickets was Friday night, 9 p.m. So I'm going alone to the first showing at six. So I will be doing a back-to-back -back double feature of the Eras Tour movie. And I'm very excited about it actually because I just know I'm gonna wanna see it again. So I am going to be making bracelets and bringing them to see if anybody wants to trade bracelets. I don't know, I literally like, my town is pretty small. So I have no idea how people are going to react to this. If they're gonna dress up, if they're bringing bracelets, I don't really know. Um, I went to my local movie theater today. They expect it to be very busy. They were shocked by literally selling out. And then I asked about the buckets. So I'm going to a Regal theater, so not AMC or I think the other one is like Cin Cinopolis or Cinemark or something like that. I'm going to a Regal Theater. They do have the buckets. I was asking them how early I should get there if I want to get the popcorn bucket and they had no idea how busy it was going to be. So I, I live pretty close. So I'm just going to do some recon, kind of like hang around and see if I could get one. I don't know if people are going to line up. There's assigned seats at my theater. So it's not like you have to wait in line to get a good seat inside the theater. So I guess I will take you guys along for that experience. I'm not sure sure if I'm gonna dress up or not. I don't know. We'll see. So I'm gonna go back to Hobby Lobby and get more beads because I'm actually surprised how long all of my beads lasted. Like all the shows that I went to that I still have beads left, but I definitely need more letters. I'm like at the end of so many letters. I don't have any more L's. I don't have any more T's. My vowels are very low, so I'm gonna go grab more letter beads, just like a few other things to make some bracelets for the movie premiere. I guess tonight I will react and tell you guys if I get any more information. Information. If Taylor announced
announces anything, I will be anxiously waiting to see what is going to happen tonight at the movie premiere. I have major FOMO about it, <laughs> but you know, at this point, I never think I'm gonna get invited to anything. I just am not that lucky. Secret sessions, movie premieres, secret performances. I just, it's just not in my cards. <laughs> friends. It's 8 o'clock and it's safe to say I am not doing well today. <sighs> First of all, I'm sick, which is so lovely. I think I have an ear infection. Second of all, I'm not in LA, which is a bigger problem because Taylor Swift is there and she's meeting people and everybody's there. Everyone except me is there and I am so <laughs> sad. <laughs> everybody's like, Oh, I'm so happy for everyone that's meeting Taylor. Oh, okay. Like, I'm trying to be happy for them, but I genuinely am just so depressed. <laughs> and I feel like that's fine, you know? It's just, like, crazy, because I feel like I've dedicated my life to this woman, and not once have I been invited to a single fan thing, you know? And it's hard to see a ton of Swift talkers get invited just because they have so many followers and they are known. I mean, I've got my YouTube channel for sure and I'm like, you know, obviously so thankful for my platform on YouTube, but I feel like, I don't know, I don't have a Twitter, I don't really do Instagram, I post TikToks for fun, but I am not like, I wouldn't call myself a TikToker. You know, it's good for them. I know that they're real fans, but it doesn't like, I'm allowed to be sad is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> just seeing all of these people that I follow on TikTok and every time I open Instagram and like, I just had to get off, I had to shut it off. And so like, I was going to, you know, react to everything and like talk about the premiere, but I genuinely cannot for my mental stability currently. I had to get off of Twitter, get off of everywhere because all I am seeing is people meeting Taylor and it's literally like twist the knife. And you know, they always talk about never meet your heroes or whatever. I don't know. I feel like being a Taylor Swift fan is so exhausting. I just feel like I'm constantly having FOMO about everything. I'm not seeing the posts on time. And now Taylor has posted and said they're moving up the premiere to tomorrow. So they're selling tickets for the show tomorrow earlier than Friday. I've already bought tickets to see it on Friday and now I'm like, well shoot, now I have to go tomorrow because I'm afraid I'm not gonna get a popcorn bucket. I know how crazy that sounds. It sounds literally insane. I'm stressed about buying a $20 bucket of popcorn. This is what it's like to be a Taylor Swift fan. It's insane. My eyes twitching so much right now. <laughs> like, oh. Again, I'm glad real fans are getting invited, but these are also a lot of people have, you know, been invited to something like that before. Or I've, I'm seeing a lot of people on Twitter who have met Taylor before, have been to the Reputation Secret Sessions, in one way or another been invited to a fan event before that got to go to this, and it just really like feels disheartening. But I just wanted to come on here and kind of talk about it because I feel like even, I feel like I'm back in 2014 when everybody was getting invited to the 1989 Secret Sessions, getting meet and greets, getting invited backstage at the concerts, and it just, it feels like I'm I'm missing out and I feel like everybody has met Taylor except me and like everybody's getting these opportunities I know that feeling all too well of intense FOMO just feeling like am I not a good enough fan that I don't get invited to these things like I'm trying my best I've literally dedicated my entire life to Taylor Swift so I just don't know what else I could do at this point <laughs> So when we had COVID, I actually really enjoyed it because nobody was getting invited to meet Taylor. There was no secret sessions or secret fan events, confidential meetings. Even on the Eras tour, there was no meet and greets on the Eras tour. And so I enjoyed that experience because I feel like the minute there's something like this, I get stressed out as a fan that I will never meet Taylor and it just makes me really sad. I know this sounds like this is just like all not real problems, you know what I mean? Like these, it just seems I don't know. It seems silly to be stressed about this stuff and it seems like whatever But like when somebody is like such a big part of your life and you're seeing other people get things that you want Jealousy 
envy. Everything sets in and it's like sad. There's a lot of emotions. A lot of us are so emotionally tied to Taylor Swift that it's like, it's obviously way more than just the music. It's everything. You know, being a Taylor Swift fan, it's like all encompassing. It's daily life. It's my Roman Empire. So anyways, I don't even know if I want to open Twitter right now, but let's do it together, shall we? Just because I I can't not know what's going on. A lot of people are saying she's pointing towards reputation being announced soon because she said, look what you made me do in the caption. And then she said, I'm getting in the car, like getaway car. See, there's definitely other people online saying the same thing as me, like 2006 Swifties who have never been invited to anything. How are we holding up? After 17 years, you think it wouldn't hurt as much, but here I am. That's the thing. It's not about being upset at the people that are there. It's about being upset that I'm not there <laughs> and that I've been so dedicated for so long. But the thing is now Taylor is in an era of being the most popular person ever. So I feel like the pool of people to choose for these events just got a million times bigger. So I probably had a better chance of meeting her back in 2014 than I do today. So that's just so great. Anyways, I don't even know where I was going with this rant, but I guess I'm just telling you that just because you're not invited to these types of events or if you're not recognized as a fan, whether it's Taylor liking posts online or inviting you to stuff or just any noticing you or anything like that, you're not any less of a fan just because you don't listen to Taylor Swift on repeat 24-7 to be in the top 0.0001% of listeners on Spotify. So anyways, you're allowed to feel any way that you feel and this is how I'm feeling and I just wanted to talk about it. <laughs> so I guess now I'm on my way to buy a ticket to the first showing tomorrow because Taylor Swift owns me and I will be at the first showing regardless of the fact that I already bought tickets to two different showings on Friday. So yeah, uh, on the bright side, I went to Hobby Lobby today and bought beads to make more friendship bracelets in the morning. Maybe I'll make them tonight. I don't know. I'm feeling a, too, a little too depressed to think about it. <laughs> By tomorrow morning, my mood should have turned around, but I'll let you know. I'm gonna be going to the premiere alone. <laughs> so I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow. Love you. Hey besties. So, oh my gosh, my own voice just freaked me out because of how low it sounds right now. So currently, I am sitting in the urgent care parking lot waiting for them to call me so that I can go inside and they can give me antibiotics because I am like 99.999% sure I have an ear infection, which is just so great. In the meantime, I brought my bracelet making stuff. So we're gonna do a little haul of what I bought at Hobby Lobby yesterday. So first I have the obviously needed some more string. This is the best one that I've used. It's super stretchy and it's easier to tie than the clear stuff. I have found that Hobby Lobby has the best bracelet making supplies for the best price. I got a restock of the colorful small beads and letters because I ran out and then I got a new one just because I saw this and I was like that's really pretty we have pearls all different color pearl beads I'm gonna make a few bracelets while I wait for them to call me I feel like I've been fighting this for days now and like gaslighting myself into thinking I'm not sick at all but here we are finally bad enough where I just decided to come to urgent care. I will make it to the premiere tonight if it kills me. I swear, if I don't get this pink popcorn bucket, I am going to lose my mind. <laughs> Look at all those E's and A's. I'm actually very excited to see the movie. I've already seen spoilers of which songs are cut from the set list, which I feel like I knew some were going to be cut because it just takes so long. The movie itself is literally two hours, 48 minutes, and the concert itself was like over three hours so you had to know something had to be cut from the movie I don't know if I was expecting the ones that she cut and honestly it hurt I would say the one that hurt the most was the archer because that was like that's my favorite song from lover and I would have loved to see a full HD version of that but maybe she'll still release them individually and just aside from the movie, I'm praying because I can't believe, I also can't believe she got rid of Long Live and Cardigan. Like, damn, 
that's that's a double homicide because obviously I would sit in that theater for three and a half hours but I don't know if most people would but I would definitely want to see all the entire show every transition I know she cut down a lot of those but anyways I am excited to see it and I'm excited to give you guys my full review and opinion reaction to it I'll check back in if I finish this bracelet Okay guys, so as you can see, I'm doing so well today. Here we go. So I went to urgent care. I do not have an ear infection, but like pre-ear infection. So I might have one if I wait till tomorrow. I don't know. And now I'm gonna make friendship bracelets because that's the only thing that makes me feel better. Okay, so while I was in the car, I made one bracelet and it's really cute. Era's tour movie with all the Era's beads. Wait, I definitely forgot Midnight's. <gasps> How could I forget Midnight's? Okay, I guess we have to make another one. I have my emotional support Trader Joe's Chicken Tiki Masala and my emotional support oversized Midnight shirt. And now we're gonna make some bracelets. Okay, you guys really need to see my setup. A professional. My beads collection has grown exponentially. <laughs> Okay, so here's what I'm wearing. Purple skirt, purple cardigan, speak now. 13, my friendship bracelets. And then we've got the tour bag. So, it is three o'clock. The movie's not till six, but I'm really worried the popcorn bucket and all the merch is gonna sell out. So I'm gonna go scope it out, see if I could buy it ahead of time and maybe just like go back later. So yeah, wish me luck. I truly have a disease. This is not not normal <laughs> hello guys i am back with merch <laughs> so here's the deal i do not think i'm gonna make it to the movies tonight i am exhausted and i really need to rest and get better so that i can fully experience the era's tour movie i know that it, i'm gonna miss the first showing but I did go around to all of the movie theaters and pick up all the limited edition merch because I was afraid if I didn't go today that they'd be sold out. So here we go. I also got some popcorn out of it. So, girl dinner. 13 out of 10. Okay, so first I went to AMC. They had the cute stuff. AMC has this limited edition pink, pink on the inside bucket, popcorn bucket. It's metal, it's like a tin, it has raised letters on it, which is cool. This is like super cute. It's also something that's functional, decorative. So I'm very excited that I was able to grab one of these. And then I think it was a combo because I think the popcorn and the drink come together for $19.89, $19.89. And so I also got a cup. So this is a plastic cup, it's clear kind of, and it's got arrows, and then on the inside it has the arrows, which is kind of cool. So this one's kind of fun. Oh, it's all the way to the bottom. And then they also had a tote bag. So they have this black tote bag with the colorful logo. And then it also comes with a light up baton. If I pull this out, do I turn it on? Here we go. It lights up. So fun. So this whole thing was $13, which is great. I think it was, it might've been $13 and 13 cents or something, which is honestly a great deal for the tote bag and the baton. And also the material is really nice. So AMC for the win. I have no idea how much is in stock of all of these things. Thought it would be better to be safe than sorry. And then I went to my home theater, which is Regal. And so they have a deal. They don't have as much stuff and whatever, but they had a bucket popcorn bucket. The guy was like, do you want popcorn in it? Because I was just going to get the actual bucket. And I was like, sure, I'm kind of hungry. So we got a little popcorn snack. And then this one also came in a combo for $19.89. And this cup is black. So it's like, honestly, the same thing as this cup, except it's like black and like matte. And this one is, has the like inside rim eras thing. So I think the only thing I didn't end up getting is the poster. And I think they, it's an eight by 10 picture of the movie poster. I think those are usually at AMC. The AMC I was at did not have it. So yeah, that's my haul of the Eras Tour movie merch. 
I have my friendship bracelets on, so now I guess I get to make more. Yeah, I don't know how many people will be trading them at my home theater, but I'll try to get there early and try to like, you know, walk around and hand out bracelets to people. So now I'm just going to rest and I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning guys. It is October 13th, aka Friday the 13th, aka official Eras Tour movie day. I have the blue crew neck on to celebrate. My friend did go yesterday and she said you could kind of see me in the movie because on Friday night at SoFi, we were front row on the floor where she sings the surprise songs for the guitar. And so I think there's certain parts of the movie that you could probably like tell that I I'm in the background but you can't actually see me because I'm wearing an orange shirt and so I feel like because I wore that color it's noticeable in the crowd so I'm excited to see if I can see myself in the movie but yeah I'm seeing the movie tonight I have tickets to the six o'clock showing and the nine o'clock showing I honestly don't know what is wrong with me but I thought I could make that work because the movie's three hours and so I literally would be like going to back-to-back -back movies but I have to figure out what I'm going to wear. I feel like today I might go get my karma shirt and wear what I wore to the concert. Just the shirt, not the whole outfit. Because I do like being comfy in the movie theater. I know a lot of people are dressing up, going all out, and like, power to you. I gotta retrace the 13 on my hand. Maybe I'll do some like sparkles just for fun. So like, comfy, cozy, but with a little bit of bejeweled. And I also, again, don't know what the culture is of my movie theater. I've heard across the board, I've heard people say, like they went and no one was really dancing or singing and then my friend said when she went everybody was singing dancing getting up out of their seat and the morale was super high so it literally could go either way I think the movie is gonna be showing for another four weekends they might I feel like they might extend it because of how well it's doing in the theater. But on the other hand, I really want, you know, after it goes through the movie theaters that they'll probably put it on streaming in like a month or so. So I am curious to see which streaming platform it's gonna be on. I have a feeling it might be Disney Plus because she did Folklore Long Pond, like the most recent things have been on Disney Plus. And then I could watch it all the time, bring out my light up wristbands and take the little tab out of them and feel like I am still at the air tour which is what I love to do with the reputation movie oh my god I can't even tell you how many times I've watched the reputation tour movie and also the 1989 tour movie I am so happy that she has all of these because it's truly like one of my favorite things to just put on in the background and just vibe justice for the red tour movie that never was speak now has the live album and DVD fearless has its own documentary series journey to fearless just a true tragedy that red never got that but you know I feel like she made up for it with Red Taylor's version so I know that I'm kind of going off on a tangent here but we're just like having a little morning chat with my coffee 1989 comes out in two weeks it's the first time in a while I am gonna be home to listen to the album the last time I had like an, a formal album release party was Red so it's been two years but I'm really excited to just have my friends over have cute like 1989 themed snacks and drinks just have like a fun little girls night i feel like this is gonna be similar to red taylor's version i feel like their releases have been in like two separate categories we have fearless and speak now that kind of got the bare minimum fearless got even less than speak now but i would say that era lasted longer because red didn't come out for so long speak now at least got a music video but it was a very short-lived era which is honestly so tragic 
romantic for me. But I feel like 1989 is getting red treatment, which, you know, red had the whole promo, all the interviews, all too well short film, I bet you think about me video, and the Starbucks drink like special thing. I feel like this is gonna be very similar to that, which I love because I really loved Red Taylor's version release season. Like that was like one of the most wonderful like fall vibes ever. And I feel like she really set the tone with this with the big announcement at the end of the tour, all the different merch and vinyl variations and the vault scavenger hunt thing. I think she's gonna have a music video for Slut. That's what we all think because you know, that was like the standalone vault track. I just have a feeling that that's gonna be like the vault music video that she's going to do because she's done a music video for every re-record except Fearless, which again, tragic. Also, I have not told you guys, I am going to New York. So me and my best friend decided we should do like a trip. You know, ever since we found out 1989 was being released, we were like, we should go to New York, do the whole Taylor Swift ultimate New York trip because I've never really been to New York. I've been there for like a day, but it was like a super long time ago. So I haven't really been to New York. I know that Taylor has like rebranded 1989 as like a beach coastal album, not the city album that it first was, but New York like is the heart of this album. You know, this is where it was made. And so I will share more details on that in another video, tell you guys about our little itinerary. We're also gonna be hitting Rhode Island, gonna go to see some, you know, other little Taylor Swift landmarks. And so I'm very excited. This video is truly all over the place. Anyways, for the rest of the day, I'm gonna go find all of my outfits from the Eras tour. Okay, besties, I'm on my way to the movies, finally. In this outfit, I'm feeling so emo. It has me feeling all kinds of emotions because the last time I looked like this, I was going to the Eras tour on August 9th when she announced 1989, and that just makes me so emotional. Also, I'm going alone to the first showing, which is at six. So this was the original ticket that I bought to go. This was supposed to be the first show, and so it's sold out. So the whole theater is gonna be a lot of people, which I'm excited about, but here's the thing. I know that I told you guys I was going to go to both shows today, the six and the nine, but I don't think I can handle that. So I'm gonna stay for like an hour and a half at this first showing and then I think I'm going to go home and eat dinner before we go back for the nine and then I can see the rest of it then. You guys might think I'm literally crazy for this but I like, I have such bad FOMO. I was afraid like this first showing is gonna be more exciting, there'll be more Swifties like than the nine o'clock. And so I just really have to like feel all the vibes. But it's 5.30, the show starts at six. So I'm gonna see if people are going to be like going all out or not. I'm a little nervous because I feel like I went like halfway all the, you know, dressed up. So I guess we'll see. Reading, Reading, Pennsylvania. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. What album feature? Can anybody list the years 
of her Tongue albums that they were released? Uh, 2006, 2008, 2010, 2012, 2014, 2017, 2019, 2020, 2021. Are we going with the Taylor's version? Two? Oh. <laughs> and 2022. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that was actually really fun. I was surprised about the vibes in my small town. I, like, there was all these little girls dressed up, and Regal, I was really impressed because, like, literally, I think, yeah, yesterday when I was there, I didn't see any decorations, but I walked in and they had a whole photo area. They had a TV playing Taylor Swift. They had Taylor Swift music playing. And I got a little poster, which I didn't think I was gonna get one. Nicola's decided this is what she's wearing <laughs> to the movie. And then... <laughs> what is the pop going to stand? <laughs> How are you gonna see the movie? I don't need to, I was there. <laughs> I was there! <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> Okay, so before I end this video, I wanted to kind of give you guys my overall reaction, opinion, thoughts about the Eras Tour movie. Obviously, it's like absolutely amazing. So, so impressive for the extremely short turnaround. Like literally they filmed this in the beginning of August and it was ready for the theaters by October. And the amount of video that they filmed, they filmed three full shows. That's like 10 hours of footage that they had to go through and like cut together, mix the audio. It's just insane how quickly they were able to do it and how well they were able to do it because it sounds absolutely amazing. So two out of the three nights they filmed, I was at the show and it's interesting to see the difference between the camera angles and the shots that they took from these three different shows because there was one show they were getting a lot of close-ups and I feel like that was the first night they had this these people on stage with her giant cameras following her around and I feel like maybe second and third night there was still some cameras that you could see while you were at the show as you can see in the film there was definitely times where the cameras were not on the stage and that you could see the entire stage so it 
but it's interesting and like just really cool how they were able to cut all those different frames together and also Taylor is such a professional I don't know how she was able to do her normal routine with those distractions because these guys were like up in her face during the show and I'm sure they kind of like practiced it to make sure she knew like where they were gonna be and what shot they were trying to get but they really only had one shot to get it right and you can see throughout the movie that there's sometimes where Taylor isn't aware of the camera and she's singing normally and then there's sometimes that she makes eye contact with the camera and those are the scenes that are like some of my favorite because she knows exactly when to look and then when to like not look at the camera I don't know she's a professional the colors the visual the audio is so clear truly like all encompassing like immersive experience it feels like you're in the crowd of the concert in the theater I feel like that was like part of the experience because even if you were like cheering and singing in the theater the audio was so loud that it didn't even matter you could still hear everything I feel like in the theater everything was more clear the instruments were more clear you could hear the background singers you could hear things that you couldn't hear if you were actually at the show because of just like the amount of screaming that was going on in the crowd so so I thought that was really cool. The transitions between each era just flowed seamlessly even if they were either cutting something from the set list or shortening the transitions between the eras. Oh my gosh, the best transition was reputation 100%. The way that they were able to add to it with the big snake was like, oh. That was like the best part and like a really pleasant surprise for the movie. I think I just really loved how each era they like showed the album title and it kind of worked it some way into the show, into the stage, even though it was edited, photoshopped into the show. I thought it looked so, so good. Second thing I wanted to talk about is the theater vibes. And I, again, didn't know how it would be in my town. I assumed in the bigger cities that it would just be like louder and more young people, but I was really surprised by my hometown theater I would say it was kind of like middle of the road it wasn't like people were out of their seat dancing and screaming pretending it's a concert but also it wasn't like silent so there was definitely people singing and cheering especially at that first showing I still had a fun time dancing in my seat singing so I feel like that was like a medium level of energy but it was still good of course I would have got out of my seat but I wasn't gonna do that if nobody else was you really have to read the room I know that some people were complaining about people getting up and dancing and singing yeah I get it you're like come to the movie theaters and you if you don't want to have that experience then you don't want other people to ruin it for you but you really just have to read the room and match the vibes next I wanted to talk about the set list cuts because there was some deep cuts here so first I want to say that I totally understand that cuts had to be made sacrifices need to be had because the show's three and a half hours and they wanted to make the movie somewhat palatable for all audiences to see in the movie theater I don't know if the majority would go to the theater and see a three and a half hour Taylor Swift movie I would and I feel like they underestimate the amount of people that actually would do that but alas they had to make it under three hours and so they had to make some cuts the first cut was the archer and that made me really really sad I understood why she cut the archer because it's not everyone's favorite song the vibes of the archer on stage are not fully lover and it's also only her on the stage so there's less going on in the background and also lover already has so many songs like in that opening sequence that they had to cut one of them it's sad for me because the archer is literally my favorite song on lover and it, that was like my favorite part of the lover era section of the tour because the archer is just like such a hard hitter and I'm pretty sure I cried every single time I'm sad about it but I understand why she did that can't believe I almost forgot to talk about just the damn season and nobody no crime I think I just skipped over that because I like totally forgot that they just removed those because they were kind of you know switched out throughout the tour so I just like totally forgot which I don't know how I could because Tis the Damn Season was like one of my favorite moments from the first half of the tour before Heim started opening and they would come out and do Nobody No Crime. Again I think that makes sense to cut because with the transition from Fearless to Evermore it makes sense to start with Willow so that felt like a 
natural cut that happened, but it doesn't make me any less sad that Tis the Damn Season is not on the set list because I remember opening night when she opened the Evermore section with Tis the Damn Season, I was like flabbergasted, speechless, like could not believe that song was on the set list. So maybe in another life, she will release an extended version of the Eras Tour film with all of the songs that she cut out. But anyways, I can't believe I forgot that one. <laughs> the next cut I was not too happy about because Long Live is one of the anthems of the Swifties. It is like the song. It means so much to us and to Taylor, the connection between her and her fans. And also it was like super special that she added it to the set list. You know, obviously before Speak Now Taylor's version came out, she did not sing Long Live and it was only Enchanted, but I feel like she added that song for us. It was just like, oh. Again, I was lucky enough to see Long Live in LA and that was like the best experience ever. But I will say, I would have given up The Archer to keep Long Live on the set list, but I didn't, I didn't get that choice, so. And people were mad because the clip of her singing Long Live with the guitar was in the trailer for the movie, so we thought Long Live would be in the movie, but actually she just plays Long Live at the very end during the credits. But again, I... I wish long live like that that would be the one that i said you should have kept this on the set list and made it a little longer and then she also cut cardigan which was surprising to me because that is like the single from folklore the only music video and also like the cardigan is iconic so i just feel like that song is kind of like the spearhead of the folklore album so it is surprising that she cut it again it made sense from like a transition standpoint and honestly during the show every single time for some reason i thought folklore folklore era ended with My Tears Ricochet and then I'd always forget and then she'd start singing Cardigan. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Cardigan isn't my favorite song from Folklore, but I feel like I wouldn't have cut any other song from the Folklore era because I just like all the other ones more. And lastly, she cut Wildest Dreams, which honestly like makes sense because of how shortened it is in the show. It's basically like a minute and a half, maybe two minutes long. For 1989, it felt like we were rushing through all the songs to get to the surprise songs because a lot of them are shortened and Bad Blood is only like, she just sings the chorus a few times in the bridge and then it's, it's done. Moving on to the last thing I wanted to talk about and that is the surprise songs that she chose to put in the movie. Originally we had thought that she would choose like, I don't know, have like a few different cuts of the movie that had different surprise songs so you could just go to a random showing and have different ones, which would have been cool, but that's not what ended up happening. So as we know, she filmed all three nights of surprise songs, but she had to choose like the best combo. Those options were I Can See You, Maroon, Our Song, You Were In Love, Death By A Thousand Cuts, and You're On Your Own Kid. And I feel like she chose the best combination she could have. Our song was like a given. It's the only song from debut and she needed a song from the first album to tie in like all the eras. And that's the only song that she sang from debut within those three nights of filming. So I knew that our song would probably make the cut, which is great because that was the song that was from my show. And our song was like one of the first songs I learned on guitar. So I'm really happy that they included that. For people, Piano, she chose You're On Your Own Kid, which again, made so much sense because I feel like this song has totally taken on a life of its own. This is the song that created the Friendship Bracelet Project, and that has been such a huge part of this tour. That one little lyric manifested into something we could have never imagined, connecting the community in such a tangible way, and like, I feel like the memories associated with it now are just all joyous and happy and girlhood and and, you know, we're trading bracelets at the shows. I was thinking about it yesterday and I'm like, that is so interesting. That was a way for you to interact with complete strangers. And I met so many people on the Eras tour and that nothing, none of that would have happened if we didn't have the friendship bracelets as an excuse to connect with one another because I don't feel like I would just go up to random strangers and start talking to them at a concert. But because we had that little anchor to kind of relate to one another, it was just like one of the special, most special experiences ever and now these are memories that we will have like tangible depictions of and now like every time you look at your bracelets you think about the Eras tour and the people that you met and the memories that you made at the end when taylor had the friendship bracelet little thing and it said thank you to the best fans on the planet all of this is because of you and for you 
If you guys didn't know, For You is the secret message of Long Live, and that's kind of like Taylor's nod to the fans. Everything that she does is for us. And I'm gonna cry. <laughs> also, can we take a minute to recognize that I was in the Eras movie? It was so funny. I thought that I might be because we were in the front row of one of the nights that they were filming. And so I thought maybe, but I didn't want to get my hopes up. But there is one part that you can clearly see. That's, that's me. And that is during Love Story, I think like the second verse or something. It pans and you could see like I'm wearing my orange shirt. I have my phone in front of my face. You can't see my face. You can see a little orange blob and that is me in the Eras movie. And I feel like it is only right. Even if it is just for a split second, I am glad to be a part of it. <laughs> so I'll show you guys right here the photo that I was taking during that moment, which was really cool to have both POVs. I feel like I, I was gonna make it in somehow, I just didn't know how. <laughs> so anyways, I absolutely love the movie. I am going to see it multiple more times. And then when it comes out on streaming, I will watch it every day. <laughs> but I hope you guys got a chance to go see the movie. If you haven't, hopefully it'll be out on streaming soon for you. I just wanna say thank you guys for watching this video. Stay tuned for the 1989 release party. We're getting so, so close now. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.